Hello guys, welcome back to my channel and if you are new, I am Ana Maria and you are watching Miracle Orchids, the place you can learn everything there is to know about growing orchids. So, in today's video we are going to do an uh, unboxing. I have received an orchid from Fifi Corina from Canada and uh, it took uh, only 7 days to arrive in Romania. That is an amazing, amazing time. Then I'm going to give you my tips and tricks for uh, making uh, orchids which are stressed uh, from transport to adjust faster to your uh, environment. And then I'm going to show to you how I will actually repot this orchid. And remember, if you want more tutorials like this, 7 days a week, go ahead and click that subscribe button over here, so you know when I upload something new. So, I have just um, uh, uh, took the addresses of the package. Here she put very interesting uh, method of packing of Corina always. By the way, you should check uh, her channel. She is an amazing lady. She does... Um, I have a bloomy here. Uh, she does um, orchid videos, tutorials, but also she does them also in English and Romanian and she does tutorial about um, succulent uh, plants. So that is quite interesting. So here is my orchid. It is just a little bit damaged on this leaf, but that is okay. I still have uh, the spike green, of course. As you can already see, this is a Phalaenopsis uh, species or a hybrid. Okay. So let's take it out. She placed it uh, with a bit of moss and we can see the roots are still green, which means uh, this orchid stayed hydrated throughout the transport. I see a bit of a um, nutrient deficiency on this leaf, but that is okay. I will correct that and maybe I will even do a video about that. Only this leaf is uh, a bit damaged, but that is okay. And uh, this one for a bit. I see some spots in here, but I am not sure what those are. I don't think it's an infection. And uh, a few uh, snaps on the leaves uh, when uh, you are transporting them, that is uh, normal. Uh, the orchid will not suffer because of that. I'm happy my uh, spike is still green and I think it will continue to grow. And uh, now we are going to talk actually about what I am going to do to make sure this orchid um, adjusts very very fast in my environment. Okay, and now the next step it is to actually uh, help the orchid adjust faster to your new environment. And very often after you buy an orchid, she stops growing. New growths, new roots, uh, spikes, everything just stales for a while until she gets uh, at least a little bit adjusted to your environment. And I found out a great trick actually to help your orchid actually uh, speed up that process. And and um, I have been actually soaking my orchid overnight in a solution with calcium and uh, with a bit of uh, liquid silicone. Now the silicone is a new factor that I have been using recently and uh, that uh, I cannot uh, really say it uh, boosts my orchid uh, as for now but um, that uh, helps it uh, resist any fungal attacks, uh, any pests and uh, to, it's a sort of a repellent because it makes uh, leaves and uh, roots and uh, spikes buds actually thicker and more beautiful. And uh, because uh, you, when actually you have a leaf which is more thick, the um, pests are, are less attracted to it because it's uh, harder for them to bite on it. But uh, that is a different um, uh, talk that we will uh, going to have in a different video. What helps actually the orchid uh, start to grow uh, again faster, it is a boost with calcium and magnesium and that is what I have done. I have soaked uh, this uh, orchid for the past, I think, even 18 hours in uh, this solution. After, of course, I have cleaned up the medium. And for me now, it is time to cut off the dead roots with my sterilized pruners. And um, the dead roots uh, are going to feel uh, empty 
or mushy and uh, hollow inside. Also, if you pull away on the root, you will uh, remain with a string behind. That is uh, very, very common with them when they are dead. So I am going to cut only the dead part and leave the alive parts because uh, very often uh, where the um, a wound happens, uh, that part of the root dies, but the rest of it survives. So uh, that is uh, why I am so, so uh, meticulous, let's say, with uh, the wound. Very, very important it is to sterilize the cutting uh, tool that you are using because you don't want to transfer any diseases. Uh, I have found out that uh, orchids have a greater success uh, in um, adapting faster in uh, your preferred uh, method of growing when and uh, if they uh, have uh, roots that uh, grew a lot in length and less um, uh, they didn't branch as much let's say and uh, I have found out that branches are a lot more sensitive. I have here a weird root. So I have a middle part which seems dead and the rest which uh, seems alive. So I will just leave it be. And in rest I think this is very much all. Another very important step it is to spray the orchid with hydrogen peroxide 3% which is a very good antifungal agent but it will also kill any possible snails or snail eggs and other type of uh, soft bodies or uh, crawlers so I'm going to spray it and also on the leaves the orchid stayed uh, quite a bit on transport and uh, now it is in a very very different environment so the orchid came from Canada and uh, now she lives in Romania so it will uh, have a bit to adjust and uh, it is uh, this uh, time of the adaptation let's say it is when she is most sensitive so uh, we need to uh, assure the orchid will uh, adapt very very well after the leaves will uh, actually dry, uh, I will uh, spray it with this uh, bio spray from uh, Dr. Soy, which uh, um, uh, has a lot of soap in it, but it is made from a special tree and some urea. And uh, the soap uh, helps the um, leaves um, repel any pests and they don't uh, the pests don't like uh, nor the smell it doesn't smell bad but it has a specific smell and it creates a film on the uh, protective film on the leaf and also it has some silicone i think and some urea as i said so uh, for the urea part i think it would be best to spray it in the night time and uh, i might actually do that i won't spray it just now but uh, uh, after uh, let's say 10 p.m. So now I will let the orchid fizz for a few minutes, time in which I will show to you I am going to uh, use a semi-hydro uh, custom pot because that is what I have. This uh, is a re-sterilized uh, pot because I have used it in the past and I am going to use this Leca beads which have been uh, previously prepared. And if you don't know how to prepare like a bit correctly for semi-hydro, I will put a link somewhere in here so uh, you are going to see exactly how. So, um, I normally I would recommend you fill the reservoir with uh, like a bit and uh, put the orchid on top, but uh, my orchid would fit perfectly as it is this pot, so uh, I won't do that this time. I generally prefer spikes to grow in the directions of growth of the leaves but this one grows in the back and that is a bit hard for me because she will start soon to grow on your leaf from the axis and uh, I need to orient uh, the um, spike to the light so it continues to grow so I'm not sure how I will uh, proceed about that um, I will see Alright, so now it is time to add the leca bits. So I will hold the orchid very, very gently, arrange a bit the roots, 
and place my leca beads. Uh, very very gently I will make sure they enter every single place because I, we don't want to have uh, big air gaps. The orchid will not, not like that. They, uh, the orchid will like the space in between the pebbles but she will hate the huge air gaps. So I'm going to place them. would be pretty much all. You can see the leaves look a bit funky, a bit weird actually, but uh, that is the way they grew on the cellar uh, or where the cellar kept it. Uh, very very often cellars uh, put the leaves uh, upward like that and uh, that is because they want to save space and have as much uh, orchids per uh, uh, square meter as possible, let's say. But uh, for me that is okay, uh, the orchid will uh, strengthen up a bit in time, let's say. Anyway, and uh, I do have here a few ones uh, from transport, but that is okay, they will uh, pretty much cover with the next uh, two leaves uh, that uh, will grow. It is okay, I'm super super happy with uh, the way the orchid uh, arrives to me. It uh, arrives from Canada in Romania in only seven days, that is amazing time. And also the spike arrived green. I have a developing bud in here. I'm not sure how well it. Uh, you can see it, but uh, I see a little bud in there, so I'm super super excited. Uh, I will write now a tag, I'm not even sure how uh, this orchid was called, I think it was Samara um, uh, Phalaenopsis Samara Cerulea, but I am not really really sure. <laughs> anyway, I will write the tag, I will place it and uh, I will actually water it with this water because uh, the orchid... Um, or not. I have soaked uh, the orchid uh, in here uh, previously to sterilize it uh, with uh, hydrogen peroxide so I will not use this. I will prepare a separate uh, fertilized water and uh, I will water it. If you don't know how to water orchids in semi-hydro, again, I will put a link somewhere in here so uh, you can go there and check it out. And all, I also have a care tutorial for Phalaenopsis orchids so uh, if you are curious about that you should definitely go and check it out. Thank you very much for watching and see you all next time. Bye!